Hello everybody, MD Polo here. Thank you for joining me. Today we take a look at another Swiss made pistol by Phoenix. And this one is the Fusion ST. A couple weeks ago I featured the other Fusion, which was the Tactical. And the previous, the, that Tactical one has a shorter barrel, shorter slide, but also with a duty size grip with 17 rounds, more along the lines of a Glock 45, Glock 19X, some of the FN pistols. This one is more in lines of the size of a Glock 17, just to give you some sort of uh, reference. A lot of people just make comparisons to Glocks, but there's a reason for that. Most people know what a Glock looks like. Full disclosure, Phoenix did send me this pistol as well as the Fusion ST, the, this is the ST, the Fusion Tactical for test and evaluation. So these will have to go back to, uh, to Phoenix. So thank you very much. And these came through me through their only US distributor, which is the Attic Imports, and their retail arm, which is the Sportsman's Loft in North Dakota. So thank you to them for that. It is understood and they know that I will give you my honest opinion on this pistols. I have carte blanche to tell you what I think, good or bad. So I just hope you, you believe that and, and here we go. So this is more of a full-size pistol. It is nine millimeters, double action, single action with a manual safety, although you can get them configured pretty much any way you want. If you want it single action only with a straight trigger, you can do that. You want it with a decocker, you can do that as well. You want it optics ready, you can do that as well. So pretty much you can, you can order or purchase whichever configuration works best for you. It's a 17 plus one, it comes with two mags. And in prior videos, perhaps I didn't specify what kind of mags they use. These are ZZ mags, and these are from the Shadow 2. 17 rounds, Shadow 2 mags. And it also comes with a nice caliber-specific cleaning kit in this little pouch. And you just pop the top, and it's very nice. It's all copper, custom-made for the pistol. And all Phoenix firearms come with this. So you get two mags you get that cleaning kit and then you get a nice range bag this felt range bag it's got three pockets inside and then when you open it, uh, this flap right here I'm, i know i'm right in front of your face so i'm sorry about that but you open this the, fr the front flap and it's got a pouch for all the mags and everything else you may want to carry to the range so that's it's very nice so going back to the pistol itself if you didn't see my video on the tactical i'm going to give you a little bit of the history behind phoenix some of you may be familiar with the Sphinx line of pistols. You've got the Sphinx 3000, you've got the Sphinx SDP line of pistols, both um, the, um, the Alpha and then the regular one. So they're, they're, they're fantastic, very well made pistols in, made in Switzerland. So in 2010, they were purchased by Chris USA. Though some of you, some of you may be familiar with Chris, but that marriage didn't last very long. And five years after that, the company went bankrupt. The original owner of Phoenix and the creator designer of Phoenix took off from, from Chris, took a bunch of his tough artisans, craftsmen, gunsmith, and basically started again back in Switzerland with Phoenix. And that's where Phoenix comes from, is rising from the ashes. And it's a name that is very meaningful, has a lot of meaning to the owner of the company. So rising from the ashes, these are all made with the finest materials with obsession really to quality and detail and, you know, hand fitting the components. And it really takes it to another level, even from the Sphinx. If you're going to put together this or the tactical that I showed in a prior video, together with a Sphinx, you would see that there's just a notch above in the quality, attention to detail, and how everything has been polished and hand fitted. It really truly is a step above even the Sphinx. So that's a bit of the background. Giving you some of the dimensions, the total overall total length of the pistol is gonna come in at 8.20 inches. The width is gonna come in at 1.06. So for a large pistol, it's actually quite thin. The weight unloaded comes in at 1.93 pounds. So to give you again an idea, just for reference on the differences um, of, of really what the dimensions are of this pistol, a Glock 17 Gen 5 is going to be 7.95 inches long, and this is 8.2. So you got a little bit longer than a Glock. 
The Glock is actually 17, is 1.34 inches wide. This is 1.06. So it's actually quite thinner than a Glock 710, 17. And the weight of this is 1.93 pounds versus 1.5. So it's heavier than a Glock 17, but there's a reason for that. You got a stainless steel slide, you got an aluminum lower, and then you got a polymer grip area. We'll start looking at that as well. You do see that there's a mag inserted, but the gun is clear. I got snap caps in here. And just for safety purposes, you can see that the gun is clear. Put the mag aside. And while I chat a little bit, I'll let you walk around and take a look at the pistol itself. We're gonna start at the top at the slide, and it is machined from a single piece of steel billet. It's got front and rear slide serrations that are quite positive. And it's interesting because when you run your fingers in one direction, this, this way, they feel very nice and smooth. But when you go the other way, which the way you would use to do your press checks or whatever you tactical guys do, when you run your fingers this way, they're very smooth. When you run your fingers the opposite direction, the way you need them to actually grip, they get very, very bitey. They're not gonna cut you, but they're definitely very positive. Let's see if I can get out of the way of the light, and you can see there. The front sight is fiber optic, very, very bright. Let the focus catch up a little bit. And it's not dovetailed, but you do take that screw off and you can just slide it right off and replace it if you need to. The rear sight is a low pro Novak style. And this one is dovetailed and fully adjustable for windage and elevation. It's got black serrations in the rear. I can show you that. And that would be your sight picture. It's a very, very thin blade up front with a blacked out, so very nice. As I mentioned to you, the frame is aluminum. I'll show you the other side. And with Swiss attention to detail, it is, tr it is just smooth as ice. It is just perfectly, perfectly smooth. And you don't have all those legal billboards all over the place, here you just have Fusion SD standard, that's what SD stands for. And on this side, you just have Phoenix Swiss made. And at the bottom here, and I'm not sure the camera's catching there, but it just has the information of the importer, which is the Attic Imports in North Dakota. You got a six slot pick rail here to hang anything you need to hang from the front of the pistol. And this is just really nice. You can see the attention to detail in the landing pads. And these are very, very positive. I'm not sure the microphone can catch this, but you can feel see how smooth this is. And then when you go here, it's just really, really grippy. So if, whenever you're gonna put your hand, your support, your support hand here, you got your landing pad, you got something that you really can get you some traction. It's not a gas pedal, but almost, almost works the same way because it's so grippy. This being a CC75, it all started with the Sphinx being a CZ75 licensed clone, and then they took it from there. The controls are gonna be very familiar to you with your slide stop, slide release right there. And in this particular example, you've got your safety right here. So you can carry cock and cocked and locked if you want, and then release it, and there you go. Now the safety is very positive. Very smooth, positive, and it does give you a ledge, although not a big one, but you do have a ledge right here that is serrated where you can rest your finger. It gives some nice support for your recoil management. The hammer is skeletonized and it's also textured. Moving down to the grip module, like I said, the grip module is polymer. You got an ample trigger guard with a hook trigger, typical of CZ. You do have serrations in the front of the trigger guard, but none in the bottom. You got a high undercut, giving you a nice high grip into the pistol with a large and comfortable beaver tail. And you can just see the attention to the machining, the detail in the machining is just exceptional. Everywhere you look in the pistol, it's not easy to do these curves and not leave any machine marks. It's just attention to detail is fantastic. When you run your fingers across the joints, wherever you see a joint here, the union you can see, I'm not sure the, the 
focus is, is catching it or is it just too close there? Maybe there. Sorry if I'm right on your face on some of your, these shots I'm trying a new camera. So everything is just perfectly smooth. You run your finger, you don't feel edges. Even when you go down here, you run your fingers across, even polymer edges like this, they're very, very well done. Since I'm down here, let's take a look at the mag well, which is really not existing. You got your opening, but there's no mag well to speak of. Although you do have this indentations down here, as you can see, and that way when you go in, if you need to strip a mag, you do have a bit of an indentation to get your fingers in there. And while we speak about the mags, you've got your mag release right here. It's not too huge of a button, but it definitely is comfortable. And for me, with medium-sized hands, it's very reachable. I can reach it without having to break my grip. And you saw how it just shoots it out of there. It just spits them right out. Even upside down, you can see how far it spits it out. So it's very, very well done and it does the job that it's supposed to do. Turning around on the other side, you see that the mag release is reversible, but it's not ambi, the safety is ambi. And on the right side of the pistol, you also have your landing pads, your memory pad for your index finger, for your trigger finger, tick to go right there. The grip is very rubbery and very reminiscent of the Sphinx SDP. Now, if you want to change the grip, uh, you can. it comes with replaceable grip panels. So everything you see here from the wavy part back, you pop this pin out and remove this grip panel right here. It just pops right out. And then whether you want a small, medium, large, you just pop it back in, pop the pin in, and you're ready to go. You got a customized grip. So let's take a look at the trigger. And then what we'll do is we're gonna, I'm gonna have to cut away, disassemble the pistol show it to you, disassemble, we'll take a peek inside under the hood. So apparently YouTube doesn't take it very kindly to us showing you how to disassemble a pistol because they're, according to their ever-shifting guidelines, apparently is considered altering a weapon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so let me put a snap cap in here so we can take a look at the trigger. Taking a look at the trigger, in this one in particular is the single action, double action, as I mentioned. And you got, like I said, you got a nice safety here, and we'll go through that as well. But the double action, you go here, and it's going to be very, very, very smooth, although not light. It's coming in at 8 pounds, which is not atrocious. Some come in at 12 pounds, not the Phoenix. But some double action triggers popular out there come in at 10, 11, 12 pounds. This one's coming in at 8, but it's tremendously smooth. Very, very smooth. And it breaks. Now it's going to spit out the snap cap. I've got another one right behind it. And let's take a look at the single action, which is really nice. And just let it go. It's right there. I'm not sure you saw it. And then almost no take up. You're at the wall right there and it breaks. It's like glass and so smooth. Now it's going to spit out another snap cap. There it goes. And it continues to go. Let's take a look at it. Really watch it because it's going to go really quick. There. And then it breaks again. It's a fantastic trigger. I love the triggers on the Sphinx. And this just takes it to a completely different level. So let's talk about the fit and finish of this pistol. The slide to barrel fit is just superb. There's no play anywhere on this. When you try to move it, it's like a finely made custom 1911. There's no movement on the barrel. When you push down on the barrel, there's no movement whatsoever. No movement whatsoever on the slide, on the back. I know it's right in your face. I'm sorry, I should put the tripod a little bit higher. Like I said, experimenting with this camera. So the slide, the slide to frame finish, the fit is just perfect for me, in my opinion. So let's put this down for a second. Let me disassemble it and I'll be right back to show you the rest of it. Okay, we're back. And now that the Phoenix ST has been disassembled, and just so you know, it's a typical disassembly process like a CZ, a Shadow, a CZP07. You got the little notch back here, 
and you line it up with a little notch back here. And then there's a button on the other side of this that you push, which would be this. Just push it from the other side, pop it out, and then it disassembles like any other pistol. If you were starting looking at the guide rod, it's a non-captured guide rod with a steel, a steel rod in it. You got your standard catch right here. The barrel is very finely machined with a polished feed ramp, fully supported. And looking at the slide, but let's start with the grip, with the frame. You see the rails run on the inside, just like a CZ. And the texture and the finish is just beautiful. There's no machine marks anywhere, as you can see around. Take a look at the back. Everything has been very nicely polished. The attention to detail is just superb. And the slide itself, there's the notches that I was telling you for the disassembly. You can see the rails which helps put the, low, the bore axis low into, the, into your hand. But look how everything is just beautifully polished. You don't see machine marks anywhere. As your extractor. And let me give you a look in the, the rear sights as well. It maybe gives you a better picture of what the, the sights look like. So that's taking a look at the Phoenix ST under the hood. Now what I need to do is put it back together and come back with you. Some final thoughts here about the Fusion ST. Well, it is Swiss made, so the attention to detail is fantastic. It is based on a CZ75, but it takes it to a whole nother level. This, rising from the ashes of the Sphinx, as the owners like to say, the Fusion lines of pistols really do blend the finest materials with an uncompromised quality for attention and detail. Now, whether the value is there for you, only you can say. Coming in at around $1,500 or $1,500 is certainly not cheap, but it's not the only gun of this caliber, meaning quality, that is in that price range. You start looking at the Shadow 2s, at other CC offerings, some, some from SIG, and other custom guns, you're going to find them mostly at this price range. So whether the value is there, only you can decide. I think it is. And I think that once you have one of these in your hand, and you see how ergonomic it is, how this grip truly is, it's got very slight, if I didn't mention it, it's got very slight finger grooves in the front of the grip, if you can see here, and the texture does change. So your fingers, at least mine, fit absolutely perfect, like a glove in here. I like it very, very much the way it fits in the hand. So to me, is it worth $1,500? Absolutely. Absolutely. But if you saw my previous video on the Fusion Tactical, I made a comparison at the end with a couple of watches. Do you want to spend $50 on a watch? Do you want to spend $20,000 on a watch? And I know I'm going to extremes here, but I think you get the point. Both give you the time, what do you want to wear, and what does your budget allow? If your budget allows for a pistol in the $1,500 range, you have a lot of choices. My only suggestion would be that you take a look at the Fusion as you're making your decision process, because they are superb firearms. So I've gone longer than I was planning on, but here is the Phoenix Fusion ST, made in Switzerland. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And as always, please remember to subscribe and click the like button. It really does help the algorithm a lot and you hear it from, the, from other channels, but there's a reason for it. YouTube is not a very friendly platform to gun channels. And you, not only staying the length of the video, but also clicking the subscribe button, the share button, it does help the algorithm because it tells them that there's people out there that want to see things like this. So please remember that I do upload videos every Friday morning and when my schedule allows also on Wednesdays. I'm very active on my Instagram. If you haven't followed me there, I would appreciate it if you did. But I usually let you go because I look, usually let you know what's coming in the channel on Instagram before it hits YouTube. So once again, please pray for our country. 
And as always, God bless.